most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and a retirement worth having. When I give this mantra, I've been doing it for more than possibly two years. I can't even remember when I began doing it. But what I know is that a man in the force has been stalking me, harassing me, and literally impounding my vehicle, ruining my life in jail, and just destroying every relationship I ever had in my business world. That is a monstrous man, or a stupid child of Satan. When I talk about Satan, I use the definitions of the late and great Derek Prince. A Satan person is someone who is a person who is filled with hatred and evil exists. In life, we have to know what is a Satan force. A Satan force is always an usurper, usurper, and I can't say the word very well, but it is a historic term usually associated with the kings and queens of old. An usurper is someone who's always trying to interfere and take on more power than they earn a year. In life, we have to know who is who and what is what. But what you can always tell about a satanic force is they're always poo-pooing the good things you want to do. The good things you want to do highlight your soul. They help to raise other people up in the world. They help to take someone out of poverty and put them out of the poorhouse into something just a little better so they can make it in the world. The American government is issuing all these checks. The checks are to help people to get higher in their life, do things they need to do, take care of old bills, take care of old strife, and give themselves some relief. That's why they're called a relief check, I believe, in a lot of the publicity. In life, we have to decide what is our career and what is our industry and what is our profession. When I talk about the three R's of life, I'm talking about the three R's of life. They are the rules that we live by, the roles that we fill in people's lives, and the responsibilities we have to those relationships. When I'm talking about the eight R's of life, that's totally different. And I have to look at my own sign to remember what I did in that intellectual property discussion and basically drafting and crafting and creating of life. My whole world is intellectual property development. I've scripted a film, I'm writing a theater production, I might even get a musical out there if I can find someone to help do the music and the comedy of it all, but I don't really want to do that very often. I'm not a musical person, although I marvelously played the cello when I was in junior high and was setting first chair most of the time. But after a while I got really tired of the constant challenges from some girl whose name was Pam who was constantly annoying and is probably still am. But if I'm talking in a stupid rhyme, it's because I'm trying to make you pay attention. I'm trying to make you pay attention more to your life than mine. You see, if you're paying attention to my life, it means you're giving up your life. If you're not my intimate partner, then you're really abusing your own life. If I did not actually personally ask you to come and be with me and spend time with me, then you're not actually in my life. If you're a sideline character from some time of my history, well, sorry, but I don't walk back in history. If you've monkeyed my life, if you've stood against me in a court of law, if you betrayed me at all, there's no way you're in my fucking life. If you're overweight at all, not guarding your temple of the Lord, there's no way in your life that you're in my life. What I'm saying, and sometimes I make mistakes when I'm talking in ad lib or even when I'm reading my scripts, but what I'm saying is that God, above all, gave you a body to care for, and literally, you are to beware of the things that you do in your life. When you violently attack a person's computer or their cell phone or interfere or impede their relationships, their love lives, and their spiritual life, you have destroyed your own life before God. It means Satan has gripped you, and you have failed to protect your life to the Lord. You see, there's all kinds of codependency issues. There's codependency with food that we learn in Food, Inc., where we don't have really clean food going on in some of the manufacturing houses and processing plants of our food. We also have people who are participating in alcohol economics because they had an alcohol product, they had a drug addiction, or something like that. There are other people that are codependent to power. There are other people that are codependent in relationships because they need the passive-aggressive passive aggressivity of being in control without looking like they're in control. When I talk about relationships, I'm pretty well read about them because I lost a loving partner in college and in, after four years of loving time and openly, that wasn't marvelous for me. So I had to go study, I spent time with the therapist and I really healed myself at that time. 
I learned about the dysfunction of my family. I read Bradshaw. I read uh, Milton. I read a lot of people. I read a lot of poetry, too. But openly, that's my life, and that's what was my life back then. Now, in my 50s, I have a right to change my life. It's not a midlife crisis to want to do something new. I've just decided that I've timed out of my marketing life. I've sort of timed out of my Japanese life because while Japanese clothing is incredibly popular in Illinois right now, I can't say if it's as popular back home. I'm missing my favorite shirt that I bought more than 20 years ago that has had lots of life, but I left it with a reporter's wife along with a handful of goods. I've been calling them for more than a year to say, would you please return my goods, but I can't get through. So I don't marvelously know if that amazing veteran reporter has lost his life or fallen ill with his disease, or whether his wife just decided to steal from me everything I owned. In life, there are thieves in the world, and they didn't remember that Jesus on the cross might have forgiven that thief next to him, but I guarantee that thief did not have a marvelous life until he got to that cross. You see, a lot of people like me might turn the, over a new leaf, we might do a new thing, we might play a new song, but it's because God has brought us along to do that. If you don't have a God in your life, that's not on my life. That's on your life. If you don't have a pastor that you can talk to to help you get on track with the spirit of your life, that's on you. You're a big boy or a big girl if you're above 12, and you can simply go to a church and literally look for one. You can go to a different church each week. You can go to a different church practically each day. You can go talk to people on the phone. You can do it on MT uh, not MTV, but on some sort of video TV, and openly that's your right. But if you're foolish about life, if you're interfering with the life, if you're harassing the life, if you're harming the life, if you're physically, sexually, or emotionally, or psychologically gaslighting a life, you're a moron in life. You see, your life is then enslaved to that person. You are stupid in life. I have rejected people in my life for their betrayal of my rights. I have rejected people in my life for their gossip on my life that harmed my life. I have rejected people that have destroyed my medical rights to things I need to be healthy and whole in my physical being. I am openly ready to sue every person in life is sort of true because I have a right to be me. You have a right to be you and you don't have the right to tell me I'm not me because you're not me. You don't have my version of God in my life and you are not even in your own church in your own house of God. You're so busy fucking people's lives, interfering with technology, ruining your own life and own prosperity that it's not my business to talk to you is true. But if you put your shit in front of me, if you insult me in some way, if you do anything that any man today would not tolerate, I will respond in the same way that any man would in this world. I have lived my whole life in this manhood and I don't have to prove it to anyone. What people did to me, how they abused me, how they cut me, how they ruined me, that is my business. That is my private business. And I don't have to be one of these politicians taking off my clothes and showing you my scars of war. We have a civil war brewing in America, and that civil war is a monstrous ideology that's ridiculous to me. If you don't want to end up in jail, then you do your best not to play stupid in the world. If you want to end up in jail and get your little free meal that will barely feed you and you'll be starving to death, then by all means, steal something. By all means, hurt someone. By all means, beat someone down and may have been bloody them. By all means, break their feet, break their thumbs, ruin their guns, whatever the fuck it is that you do. Go ahead, steal from people. But that's stupid on you because your life will be cut short in a moment that the right person comes along to do the right thing. You see, the only thing that allows evil to exist in the world is what Kushner said which is when good people don't do the right thing. When good people try to control other people to make them believe their beliefs and believe in their God and their version of God, they fooled themselves into satanic worship. Satanic worship says, I will be Lord over your life. I will tell you how to live. I will tell you what to do. I'll tell you what to wear. I will ruin your clothes. I will cut your clothes. I will make them smaller so they don't fit you and they produce a tightness on you because I want to see the body of you and how dare you do that to me or anyone else. Girls who like to show off and reveal their bodies like the Kardashians have a good body to do that. Other people with more modesty who have more relationships who are concerned about those relationships don't do that. You don't have the fucking right to put your hands in my pants. You don't have the right to put your hands in my pockets. You don't have the right to put your hands in my mother's pocketbook. You don't have the right to put your hands into my bank account records. And you most certainly don't have the right to look at my records of the vehicle that my late father purchased for me so that I would not be in struggle and would not be in strife as I move forward in my business in a different direction in life. If you're a sibling or a late sibling of me, too bad for you. 
You made a choice. You made a choice to harm me, and I don't have to be true to you. If you pissed all over our relatives and told them the lies that you wanted to spin so that you could be in control of me, you fucked yourself before God. God is the God of all people. God is the creator of all souls. And God returns the souls back to his house when we die. What you're doing, playing so much attention, paying so much attention to a person's body, is the foolishness of the world. The human body is simply a vessel of bloods and cells and things that either keep us in good health or doesn't. But that's on our eating habits, that's on our exercise habits, that's on our soulful habits, that's on our prayers, and that's on your time in life. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth of the Lord. And the truth of the Lord may be in the Bible, it may be in the Quran, it may be in the works of Confucius, or the mentions, or Lao Tzu, or anybody else on Amaterasu, but I don't give a shit what you do with your life. Go out and live your life, but leave my life alone, because my life is my life, and my whole purpose on these audio files is to remind you of the truth of life, that our cells age, and they decay, and if you're not taking something like Protandum, a marvelous all-natural product, to slow the aging process, which we can't promise it will do, and we can't promise it will keep you out of illness or prevention of sickness, but what I can tell you it will do is to give you energy for life. We at least can say the truth of that. It is something called biohacking. It is something that has been proven in medical science. The man who did the whole fucking thing won the Elliott Crescent Medal. So don't fucking tell me that it doesn't work for you. But tell me this. Who are you to tell me how to live my life? You are nobody to me. And I am nobody to you. So I'm not going to walk in your house. I'm not going to put my hands in your refrigerator. I'm not going to taint your food. I'm not going to ruin the money that you spend. And I'm certainly not going to put my hands in your pockets and try to take your thread. So let's be clear. Who are you today in front of the house of the Lord is up to you today. Who you are in this world is up to you today. How you behave, what you say, how you represent black lives matter, how you represent Asian lives matter, how you represent the fact that all lives matter. All lives matter to God. And if you're fucking somebody because you don't think their life matter, that's between you and the satanic force. You have lost your soul to Satan.